right, we have our first guest of the afternoon here. He was a member of the 6970 Knicks as well. Mr. Bill Hoskett. Bill, this is uh, CP here from Knicks Fan TV. We have Jake Brown from New York Post Sports. How are you doing today? We're doing well. Looking forward to this. So great to be back and uh, to see some of the guys. And uh, I just sat down with uh, Dr. Barnett now. He was Dick Barnett when I was here. But uh, uh, Dick reminded me of a mistake I made 50 years ago. It didn't, it didn't take him long. He said, uh, have you tried to guard Lenny Wilkins lately? No. So, <laughs> Doctors don't forget that. No, that years later, they that's a name from the past to all of you and yeah, to everybody. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh, I was in the game given to Busher a rest, and uh, they ran a little pitchback play, and I switched out on to Lenny Wilkins. I yelled switch, and he hadn't used his dribble yet. And uh, – he blew by me, and to this day, I don't know which side he went by on. And, and Dick offered me a windbreaker at the timeout saying, hey, you've got to learn some things. You don't ever – with your speed, you don't ever yell switch and check, try to check Lenny Wilkins. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> Bill, what made that 69-70 team so special? It was obviously the first Knicks title, but you seem to remember it like it was yesterday. So clearly it was a fond memories for you. Oh, it's a tremendous memory. They were uh, not only great players but great people. Mm -hmm. And – uh, it was a group that uh, played together, had to play together. We weren't overpowering large or anything like that or extremely athletic, but a uh, very smart basketball team that knew how to move the ball. Uh, Red Holzman forced us to play defense whether we wanted to or not. And, uh, uh, but it was a great group of guys. Willis was such a great captain, and, you know, Dick and Clyde in the backcourt. And then – Cassie coming off the bench, he was so explosive, and Bill and Dave up front. Uh, it was just a fun team just to be a part of it. And in, in that era, uh, you didn't get recognition for doing anything other than winning. And so uh, Bill Russell had kind of set the bar kind of high up in Boston, 13 years and yeah. 11 rings. And so it was all, it was all about winning, and uh, we were really excited to get that first championship for the city. You being part of that Minutemen group, what did you feel like your role was for that team? Well, you know, it was really just to make sure that you didn't hurt the team, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and keep everybody ready. My first year, we had so many injuries. Phil Jackson got hurt, and uh, so some of us had to play where I don't think Coach Holzman really wanted to play us all that much. But uh, – uh, and I would, and after the trade, when we got Dave DeBusher, uh, he was a great mentor to me because uh, Dave guarded the opposing big forward on the other team and gave me a lot of instructions. The five or six <laughs> minutes I would in to give him a blow, uh, he made sure that uh, the guy didn't get his average against me. So he, he was like a coach on the floor for me. I'm curious, were you guys motivated at all by the Mets and Jets winning prior in 69? Were you like, all right, we need to complete this trifecta in New York City? Oh, well, I don't know if we talked about it that much, but it was kind of obvious with the media attention and everything that went on. So, uh, and we became uh, kind of the focal point in the winter, even the uh, uh, Broadway and actors and uh, the movie people. They would come during the week games. Now, Saturday night, they were somewhere else. But uh, yeah. <laughs> during, Studio the, 54. during the week, they were behind our bench. <laughs> and so uh, it was just a fun time to be in New York. And any time you're winning, it's great. And uh, I've said many times, I, I ended up in the expansion draft a couple years later. But I, I can't imagine being in this city and not winning. It wouldn't be as much fun. Yeah. But uh, – I remember the night we won, uh, we had won 18 straight, which at that time was an NBA record later broken by the Lakers. And, uh, uh, but we lost the, I think, going for 19, we got beat by the Pistons in the garden. And the game ended and we stood up and we're kind of walking off the floor and the place started to boo. And then they erupted into like a standing <laughs> ovation. It was kind of like a Bronx cheer, yeah. like, uh, What's wrong with you yeah. guys? You know, you yeah. lost a game. Not, so. not much has changed. Not much has changed <laughs> <No>. <laughs> today. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Wow. So, in that game seven, you know, you had all the drama. Did you know Willis was going to come back? Well, we all had the feeling he was going to try. I mean, if you knew Willis Reed, and I roomed with Willis on the road when my rookie year, so really got to know him as a person. And that dates us alone because now they all have individual suites. So, yeah. uh, But we had two to a room. But uh, Willis had – such willpower, such dignity. He's a great captain, just a great man. And uh, we knew if in any way possible he was going to play. Then to come out and have the garden erupt the way it did, it was uh, 
you know, I've been in a lot of arenas, a lot of games. Uh, you know, we won in high school and went to the Final Four and played in the Olympics, but I never heard a crowd like that seventh game when Willis yeah. came out of the locker room. And uh, the Lakers actually stopped warming up. And, you know, We're Hall of Famers, you yeah. got, yeah. you know, Baylor West, you know, Wilt, and they stopped and said, what's going on here? So, and then when he made his first couple of shots, it was, and then Walt had a phenomenal game and took over, and it, it was over from that point on. So Dave DeBusher, may he rest in peace. How integral was he to that Knicks team? Oh, he was terrific. I mean, Dave was uh, – I think he was born a man. He'd already <laughs> been a player coach of the Pistons when he – you know, at 24 years old. Man. So when the trade was made, uh, it changed our whole team because not only to give us a great power forward that really understood the game, but – it moved Willis from the corner back inside where he was more comfortable after Bellamy was traded. Mm. And uh, Comives was traded, and it brought Walt Frazier to the floor, to the game. And so the team just – it changed the perspective of the entire team. So it, it, it was fun. I, You know, one of my fondest recollections that I tell people when I speak back in Ohio or whatever um, – you know, my first game, I came straight from the Olympic Games, so they were in the fall that year. And so the team had already played four or five regular season games. And so I was introduced that night and just, you know, Red told me, you're not going to play, but you're going to go through warm-ups and they're going to have a little introduction, which they did. But I took my spot on the Nick bench and Walt Frazier was to my left and Bill Bradley was to my right. And they were both college players of the year. And I said, this is a pretty good team. <laughs> They're not in the lineup. It's a cavalcade of stars, <laughs> yeah, right? And they're not playing. So you knew you had to bring your A game just to be part of it. But it, it, it was a tremendous experience. Wow. You mentioned Lenny Wilkins in here. He was a legendary coach as we know him. But for you, a, a great player, who, who was, would you say that, that NBA legend who was the toughest guy to, to guard in, in your playing days? Oh, my. Uh, they all tried to career against me. So, I mean, uh, but uh, – Billy Cunningham was so tough. Chet Walker was a great player. Connie Hawkins had so much ability. Uh, played an exhibition game, not a regular season game, against Dr. J once, and he did things we'd never seen done before. Yeah. And now probably 25 guys in the league can do that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, uh, they were so special. And then and the great teams in Boston, those games were, were so tough. Yeah. And, of course, Havlicek and Siegfried were both alums of Ohio State the way I was. I'm a little bit younger than those guys were, but uh, – uh, I knew how tough they were, and of course Russell, when it was playoff time, was just unreal. I mean, just a great player, and of course Wilt was so imposing, and we had Jerry West. I mean, out yeah. there, uh, just great, great players and uh, guys that really came to compete every night. So it, it was a. I think when they picked the top 50 in the league, we'd played against maybe 37 yeah. of them or something yeah. in that era. Yeah. So it, uh, it was pretty phenomenal. Will Chamberlain. That's all I need to yeah, say. Like, that's it. May he rest in peace. Like, what was he like in covering Will Chamberlain? What was that like? He was a monster. I yeah, mean, yeah. Uh, Will was uh, – people forget how strong he was. They think – call him Wilt to Stilt and all that. But later in his career, uh, he had really bulked up. And that uh, – the year that we won the championship, the first one in 70 – uh, Wilt had torn his patella tendon during the year and said, I'll be back for the playoffs. And – we played him a regular season game toward the end of the year, and he had just gotten off the universal weight machine, which they used at the time, and came in our locker room before the game to talk to, to Willis. And I said, I've never seen a human being look anything like that. I mean, he was like 330 pounds and still looked muscular. His arms were huge, and uh, Wilt was amazing. There's no question. In fact, uh, in the fifth game, which we were fortunate enough to win that year, after that's the, year, the game that Willis got hurt, uh, I actually came in for Willis, and uh, that didn't last very long. That didn't intimidate Wilt too much either. So, <laughs> you know, but uh, very seldom do you ever get in a game at my size, you know, and back then 6'8", 228 or whatever, that uh, you're giving away six inches and, fifth, you know, almost 100 pounds. Yes. I mean, he was three and a quarter mm -hmm. that year in the playoffs. So, uh, 